Welcome back to the fourth part in my Laboratory Shaker project series. This time I will try to connect uh, my servo in the lower part to the seesawing upper part. And this will hopefully happen through a connecting rod made here out of some brass material and a pin made out of a threaded stainless steel and three rod that will go yeah we already drilled and tapped the holes that will go as a pin through the top part and connect to the connecting rod this will also probably be the last part for now about this project because afterwards i have hopefully a working laboratory shaker. Before we dive in and actually make some chips, let's review the plan again. That was the plan I showed you in part one, card here, link in the description, and I revised it slightly. It looks now something like that. The two differences to the original are really the length of the connecting rod, which is longer now, and the movement range of the servo, which is smaller now. So first order of the day would be to shorten that servo arm because it is too long, uh, then somehow <laughs> create that connecting rod and the pin and finally mount the whole thing here, the salvo in the lower part and then put everything together. It was quite hard for me to get a grasp on that salvo arm, but yeah, lots of shimming involved and in the end I managed to do it. I also uh, put in a screw here with washers on the top and the bottom the washers being steel, the servo arm being aluminium, so that hopefully keeps me from sawing into the meat that I actually need later on. Now I file a radius on here, uh, again using the washers as kind of a guide. I touched it up with a little bit of <laughs> red sharpie, yeah, just for cosmetic reasons and mm, well, not perfect, but reasonably enough. I mean, the, <clears throat> the washer was, of course, a little bit off center, so, but yeah, nothing will be in the way of the movement, I guess. So let's continue with the push rod. That's the plan for the push rod. Uh, really a simple affair. Yeah, that was the old version. Let's get started on that. I made a mark at 30 millimeters approximately. So yeah, I will <clears throat> saw off a little bit left of it. I do need new saw blades for the small saw. Uh, yeah, let's file this, uh, yeah, to size. I just realized I don't need really to file it down to the final size because I will <laughs> put some radii on it on both ends anyway. So the important thing is now to place the holes at the right spots. Thank you. 
And we're back to filing radii and yeah, I use the same trick here with the washers and the screw through the hole. And <clears throat> fun fact, did you know that the first evidence of people using connecting rods in some kind of machine goes back only to the late third century AD. So connecting rods are around for only 1,700 years or so. Well, maybe a little more, but uh, yeah, you should think they figured that out earlier, but uh, evidently they didn't. So that was a push rod and yeah, I went over it uh, with a little bit of sandpaper and then polished it. Well, not polished, but you know, uh, with some stainless steel cleaning paste. And yeah, that was from the sawing that was totally me, but yeah, it's nice and shiny. <laughs> the threaded rod, uh, yeah, first saw off a 200, mi oh, out of frame, 200 millimeter piece. I hope I'm sawing at the right side here of the marking. Next I want to file kind of a cone here at one end. So if we push that thing through all the holes, we actually have a fighting chance of it getting through. And of course I have wood in here just to yeah preserve the threading. That's coney enough. Let's see if we can still thread. Yeah. On that on, perfect. No problems. And yes, it's coney as hell. <laughs> Last operation on that rod, I want to, yeah, have something that I can, uh, yeah, a slot so I can uh, turn it with a screwdriver for the last five millimeters through the holes when I cannot no longer grab it. So yes, that fits perfectly. Any kind of, yeah, suitable screwdriver. And now we could call the whole thing instead of a threaded rod, a, uh, yeah, very long screw <laughs> without a head. The last parts we need are some polycarbonate blocks here and here to mount the servo. And I will use for that 10 millimeter polycarbonate that I have left over from the laboratory water bath project card to the playlist here, link in the description. Uh, but there are some difficulties there. You see, when I was planning the whole thing, I was under the impression that servos of a certain size, like that is a full size servo and there are mini servos and micro servos, maybe there are even pico servos, I don't know, I'm not an RC guy. But I was under the impression that a servo of a certain size has a certain size. Turns out that was a wrong assumption. So uh, my specific full-size servo here has, for example, 45.5 millimeters between the holes on that axis. And the body is between 40.1 to 40.9 millimeters thick, depending on where you're measuring. Other servos, Full-size servos have between 48 and 49 millimeters between holes. And they are up to 40.8 millimeters here wide in the body. 
and also from these flanges here to the bottom uh, my servo is 30.2 millimeters other servos are up to 32 millimeters uh, so I'll somehow will wing it and I haven't talked about <laughs> thickness yes so my servo is 19.9 millimeters thick other servos are 20 point somewhat millimeters thick so basically in height i will need to accommodate maybe a future servo change 21 millimeters and then i will go in with the holes for the screws from one edge the inner edge 3.5 millimeters and <laughs> the holes are 10 millimeters apart that's really about the only measurement that is <laughs> the same between servos of different vendors 10 millimeters between here okay so let's build these blocks here <laughs> Now I have two identical blocks, <laughs> almost to the size I wanted it. Actually, they are in each dimension I cut half a millimeter too large and I guess that's a systematic error <laughs> in my table saw. Uh, yeah, I was pretty sure I adjusted it to the tenth of a millimeter, but I guess the blade yeah how that thing is built it got a little bit of flex so for this material and that blade i got half a millimeter i have to subtract in the future uh, from my measurements or how i adjust the saw to get to my actual measurements anyway uh, let's put four holes in here and cut some threads Now I have two identical blocks with four drilled and tapped holes. Please note that I drilled the holes five millimeter deeper than the tab for the thread is going. So I had a lot of space here for the debris and the chips. Now I need cutouts here at the back of BH pieces for the cable and the cable outlet here of the salvo. Uh, naturally that one on this side will be a little bit bigger because of the salvo cable outlet and that one here will be smaller because I just have to pass the cable through. So let's screw the salvo to our blocks and hope for the best. Okay, I fumbled around a bit. It's not really important that these blocks are parallel to each other, but it's, uh, well, nice. And yeah, we have here a little gap between the block and the salvo as intended. Yeah, here on that side too, there's enough space for the cable. 
I think after cleaning up stuff, I'm ready to glue that servo in. I cleaned up everything real well with alcohol. Uh, before that, I scraped here that edge out just to make sure that there's no glue from the previous operation interfering. And I also have a little chamfer here on these edges. So yeah, no interference here in that corner. And just to be on the safe side, I put a wee bit <laughs> of grease here on the edges of the servo, so not to glue the servo on <laughs> to my bottom piece too. Okay, uh, wish me luck. And uh, that's an M3 screw here, and I know the exact distance to that edge to align the whole thing. And I forgot to film the whole thing. Sorry about that. Just me fiddling around with glue and clamps and making sure that distance here is all right. And yeah, the usual. Now, of course, <laughs> we let that glue dry. And then we put everything together. The glue dried overnight, so... Now the question is, before we put everything together, can I still remove the salvo out of the case or have I glued it in too? Nope. <clears throat> the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the grease worked really well. So, yeah, I'm happy I will clean that up now and then for the last time, really, we will put everything together. Let's start with the servo arm and the connecting rod. And I changed from slotted head screws to, where is it? Hex head screws, because these are too fumbly. Okay, the trick here is of course to have it freely moving, but only no, uh, yeah, there is a bit of wiggle, but uh, almost no wiggle here along the axis. Next we attach the servo arm to the axis and please note that I went in here with the connecting rod as to minimize the axial forces that are <laughs> acting on the axis of the servo because if the rod is further out here and pushing you have a longer arm on the axis. Now we can attach the servo to the mounting blocks and the lower case and please note there is just enough clearance here so that the connecting rod assembly will not interfere with the heads of the screws. Now we thread the pin and yeah I already screwed it in quite some ways through the connecting rod and the hole on the other side. If my theory about that is right, this shouldn't be that hard. Finally, we push the axle through. I hope at least that's still working. Yeah, like clockwork. And we add our grab screws here at the end of the axles to keep them in place. One last touch and then we're finished. Yeah, rubber feet, clear of course. Oh yeah, these feet are really good, by the way. They are from 3M. 3M Bampon. 3M Bampon, it's the name, if you want to buy them. Do you hear that? <laughs> that? 
That's the sound of a high-torque full metal gear RC servo getting ready to tear apart my flimsy construction. Okay, let's move on to the tests. Okay, fire on the hole. Ah, that looks almost good. Got resonance. <laughs> okay. That was an effect I didn't, yeah, consider. Yeah, we will uh, we'll need, of course, to see how that thing behaves under load. I can still increase the stroke, I guess, without crushing things. I'm trying to determine. Yeah, it's it's probably the pin. Yeah, I can feel it. The pin has a little bit much <laughs> give, but uh, yeah, that can be remedied. I actually have enough meat there to replace the threaded rod, M3 threaded rod by an M4 or four millimeter rod just with M4. Uh, yeah, threads at the end, if the need should arise. But now let's let's put some load on that thing. So my laboratory water bath, and yeah, I cannot fit the control on the view. You have simply to believe me that I'm pressing somewhere buttons and turning buttons. So let's see if we can get this resonance thing again. I mean, not that I, it's useful, but it's interesting. So with more weight on it, I can actually turn up the speed quite high without running into that resonance problem. I mean, that flex here in the pin has, of course, advantages. Yeah, it adds a little bit of, um, yeah, not dampening, but you know what I mean. Okay, let's put some water in there. We have one kilogram or one liter of water in there now, and I kind of dragged the fact that I set the stroke that high. But anyway, fire on the hole. Ooh, it's slower, 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 slow, 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 slow. Okay, and less, 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 less stroke, less stroke. Much better. Let faster. Wow, we're making waves, huh? Uh, okay. A uh, little slower again. A little bit less stroke. And stop. One more liter, huh? Two liters, two kilograms, fire on the hole. No problem at all. But I, ca I can hear it working. I can hear it working, but it's, it's, it's okay. Uh, let me minimize the stroke. and go up with the speed. Yeah, that works nice. Okay, uh, down with the speed again. Oh, 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 resonancy frequency.
Okay, uh, let's stop it and put a realistic load on it. And that would be one of these rather large photo development dishes and another liter of water in there. So all in all, we have now three liters, three kilos of water in here. And I guess together with the laboratory bath and that thingy here, we are at about four kilograms total load on the shaker. Um, yeah, over eight pounds. Let's see. And I would use that only and I have to reduce the stroke really. Turn up the speed. Looks nice. Uh, let's try this the other way around. Let's turn down the speed and turn up the stroke. Yeah, that's the most I dare to do with that much water in there. Well, maybe increase the speed. Lift fast, lift dangerous. Okay, uh, now let's get serious again. Let me. Uh, oh, Houston, we have a problem. Let me turn everything down. Okay. That's better. Um, we have, um, yeah, <clears throat> let me show it to you. Okay, you should be able to see now if I switch the whole thing on again. How that M3 rod is really flexing. Maybe if I increase the stroke again. Yeah, there. Oh. And that's not good. More speed. Yeah, just for the fun of it. You can really see how it's. <laughs> yeah, that's five millimeters, 10 millimeters flex. That's too much. Okay, so uh, for such high loads, I will have uh, obviously to replace the pin with something more sturdy. That was <laughs> the fourth part of my laboratory shaker project. And in the beginning, I said it will probably be the last part, uh, at least for now. I have <laughs> already some ideas, yeah, about enhancing the software there. Uh, I think I said anyway I wanted to clean up the code because it's a real mess but I also think I want some more functionality. Uh, second and I will have to play with that thing a little bit more maybe I really uh, replace the pin by a real four millimeter bolt like thing so four millimeter meat and only an M3 thread or an M4 thread at the end. I'll have to see. And I have also an idea to build in some yeah, electrical contacts here with a little MOSFET attached and so on to keep that thing from self-destroying when the software goes awry. That is, uh, tries to move the servo in a position where um, the servo basically can't move because there's a laboratory water bath in the way. But uh, for now, this should be suffice. And uh, yeah, I bid you farewell. Till next time. Bye. Okay, uh, a little catastrophe here. Uh, after I switched the power off, the whole thing yeah, pivoted completely backward. And yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, Room for improvement.